So um, my name is Derek Sheets. I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm a, a high school teacher. I teach at Stranahan High School in Fort Lauderdale. And I've been using OSM for about two years now, two or three years. Uh, and I'm just going to present some of the, the experiences that I've had with my students and some of the, the drawbacks, some of the things that uh, the community could help with, I guess. Um, so a little bit about our school. We have two different magnet programs. The first one is a medical magnet program uh, where the students learn medical practices. They do internships at hospitals, things like that. Um, the second program is an engineering program. And there's some students that do focus on computer engineering. There's some students that are on a robotics team. Uh, so two, those two different programs uh, draw our kids in from all over Broward County. Uh, we have 14 different kids come from 14 different cities, and that'll come in play later. Um, so some of my experiences, the first one is that every summer we have a summer camp, summer internship, uh, where our kids come in, our not rising ninth graders. And it's a really diverse group. We have really high achieving students. We have uh, some students that struggle a little bit. Uh, but what we do is we bring them onto campus we, to get them oriented. And one of the things that we do with them is we have a mapping, pro, uh, we have them map out the campus. And it was just a way to introduce them to it, get them active, uh, have, so that they have an idea of where they are once school actually comes around. It was one of those things that it kind of uh, served two purposes. So we brought them onto campus, they map out where things are, and um, go from there. So uh, the second group is my uh, AP Human Geography students. They are grades 9 through 12, uh, high achieving students. And with them, we've kind of changed up what we, what we map. OK, so um, with them, the things that we've mapped, uh, first is the high school. The ninth grade students, they were the ones that um, they were the ones that did the campus. They, they marked off important points, points of interest on campus. And what it did is get, kind of give them a sense of place. When they started school, they had an idea of where they were going. Um, they knew what was important, what, what wasn't, I guess. Uh, the, se the second thing is that once uh, last year, they had security concerns. So we changed up what we were mapping. Uh, so what we did is we went to the surrounding area. Uh, with the surrounding area around campus, some of the students, and, and this is where uh, some of the students lost a little bit of focus on campus. There were, you know, things that they knew that they had to put on there, like, you know, the fields, the, the different buildings we have, pathways. Uh, once we brought them off campus, looking at some of the things off campus, I had one kid that loved mapping, like, private swimming pools. Yeah, he, he mapped 36 private swimming pools, and, you know, you just kind of have to uh, refocus them with it. So uh, we, we did that local area. Uh, with the advanced placement students, one of the other tasks that uh, we worked on, which we fit into, uh, I guess, the, the urban unit and for those uh, human geography teachers, uh, we did a city walk. We walked, went to downtown Fort Lauderdale, um, and we worked with uh, the field papers. And we had, actually, students charting off where they were. Uh, businesses that were around, the purpose of those buildings. They marked off uh, different pathways uh, just to kind of, you know, and it, it gave them an idea because those kids come from, you know, the southern half of our county. So there were kids from all over the place that had no idea what, you know, what went on in Fort Lauderdale, what, what the purpose of some of these areas was. So um, down at the bottom, the, some of the things that how it applies to AP Human Geography that I've found that, you know, as a mapper that you can get students involved, that you can get high schools involved. Uh, there's a couple things is that the students see it as authentic learning. Uh, they're actually making these changes. They buy into it uh, because of those changes. Uh, there's a couple of the objectives, I guess, that, that it map, that it hits. Uh, conducting field studies, the kids really enjoy knowing that they're a part of the process. Okay, and it hits one of those objectives for the course. Um, so with my students, uh, the first one is that th those kids that are medical students, 
the kids that are in the medical magnet program, one of the things they really enjoyed was hot mapping because they saw these are st students that want to become nurses, want to become doctors, and what they liked about it is that they were actually doing something. They, you know, one of them we were mapping, um, I believe it was, we were doing roads for someone that was providing vaccines. And the students, they saw that as something that was authentic, that they were actually doing, that, that kind of fit into something they were interested in. You know, bringing those two things together, their, you know, their love that they want to become a, a doctor and mapping for a class. Uh, the second group is the engineering students. Uh, with the engineering students, this was, they really enjoy the idea of, of mapping, of editing maps. Uh, the problem for me is that I have a limited background with OSM. And some of these students wanted to take it the next step. How can we take the data that, uh, that OSM has and uh, partner with them? Or how can I use this? How can I use it? You know, and, and our computer science teacher and I kind of, it's, there's kind of a barrier there that, that keeps us from working together on. I don't have the knowledge, you know, and I've had uh, one member from the community actually uh, volunteer to kind of speak to me about it. But, um, we haven't got past that point yet. Uh, one of the other things uh, the kids like, especially the ninth grade students, is the Geo Badge program. Uh, they saw that as something that was somewhat tangible. Uh, they saw that if they did this task, this task, this task, they got this. Um, the other thing is that <clears throat> the students liked uh, that they were in the apps that they use, Facebook. Uh, we watch Vice News, weather.com. They noticed that OpenStreetMap was there. So that was one of those things that they saw it as, this isn't something that you know, we're just doing in the classroom. It was something that uh, is real world. It's authentic. Um, with, and uh, the last one there is uh, achievement improved uh, for that particular part. The, um, some of the students saw this as a real way to you know, improve, I guess. Um, so the first one, so let's kind of touch on uh, the time part. There's been a couple of teachers that I reached out to. Are you interested in, in learning this and using OSM in your classroom? And one of the first ones is we have so much to get through. We have this mandate, this mandate from the state. We have this test coming up. Um, so is it really worth it? You know, I tried to provide some of the examples as far as what was working for me, how I was using it. Uh, but that, that's a big hurdle to get teachers involved. Uh, the second one is that uh, there's a technological gap uh, with some of the teachers I talked to that they, it took a while for them to actually learn how to do it and have an idea of, they didn't feel comfortable that they could uh, relay it to their students. Um, what would be really helpful, um, and this is where I was you know, asking for the community, I guess, is uh, if there's some kind of labs or modules Right now, what I use OSM for is we use a lot of the hot mapping with different, to with different topics that we talk about when we talk about refugees and when we talk about certain uh, diseases and areas, uh, population even, we, we use OSM. But there's still, there's still something that's needed there uh, to get teachers more involved. So these labs, modules, something that, that could be gradable, could be uh, more useful for uh, the teachers. Uh, if you were reaching out to a high school, the, the first, the, the other thing up there is relevancy. Uh, make it sure that it, you present that it's relevant to, uh, sorry, that it's relevant to uh, use for the students, that it's stuff that's actually out there. Um, and the last one is, uh, Make sure it fits in with the curriculum. If you're presenting to a group that, you know, if you're trying to get a high school involved, you know, let them know that it's, it is something that can be molded to what they're doing. Um, all right. Oh, okay. Um, yes. <laughs> um, is there anyone questions or? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I do. Um, each, we've, we've kind of assigned tasks to each of the kids. Um, they, they actually gridded off the campus their, themselves and um, just through OSM, they, they choose points of interest, things they think are important. So. Can you repeat the question? 
sorry. Um, uh, do you, uh, I was asked if the ninth grade students, they map out the campus using OSM. Uh, yeah, they do. Yes. So what do you do when the following year it's already mapped out? So that, that's one of the other challenges. Um, we, it's gotten a lot better. Uh, some of the features have changed. So we did, that's when we, we started going off campus. Some of the, the neighborhood adjacent to our campus, we started mapping out. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, so with, as far as like the sandbox idea of resetting the, the map? Yeah. Well, uh, with like the next group of students the following year uh, to map out something, you know, like the campus the following year. So that you could have the same task, but um, kind of just applied to a new group of students. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, at the, the sorry, uh, how do I fit it in with the curriculum? Uh, with the first, the first unit for human geography, it's a lot of the remote sensing, GIS, um, and in the like the objectives for the course, it says to, to do field studies. Uh, so we, I introduce it that way. So we do that for the first, you know, the first month. We I have them do the walkthrough on their own, um, and then we we have two mapping events in class, um, and then from there I try to find hot mapping that applies to whatever we're talking about. You know, and there's there are some units that I have had trouble finding a use for it, uh, but you, there's a good portion that you. you can find something in the hot mapping. Uh, one of the other things that I didn't include it there is I had a group of students that uh, they enjoyed it so much they put on one of our parent nights. Uh, they held their own mapathon, uh, which is really cool. Uh, the students taught it to their parents. You know, we had 15 parents come out, 15 parents, uh, you know, learned to map, and you know, it was, it was impressive that they they actually they were sharing it with other people. Thank you.